I thought I was going to be an actor. I was certain of it. And I, I did a painting, a self-portrait, which I still have, and it's terrible. But I really did experience an epiphany. And right at the same time, I started to feel I'm really not cut out for acting. I'm not cut out for being looked at. I do sometimes think painting is rather like performance. And there probably is an element in them in the fact that they are so performative and they are theatrical. They do deal with a certain kind of excess, which does kind of run counter to my sense of myself. So I probably am saying, look at them. No, not over here, I'm over here, sleight of hand. I've um, collected uh, so many different items of clothing over the years from so many different sources and different countries even. Um, I mean, some things I've specifically gone out to try to find for a specific painting. But it's, it's strange how sometimes I found that certain, art, uh, certain garments have come to me um, when I've needed them. It's just some weird, odd, some weird serendipity that's occurred over the years. Like, for instance, I was painting a picture which is from my cabaret series of a pair of twins, which is right at the heart of the cabaret series. And I was looking everywhere for a pair of dresses that were almost identical, but not quite, but that would fit the same model because I used the same model twice in that painting. And I generally find that most things that I want, I will find within a very small radius of my studio. And I, I frequent the charity shops of this area. <laughs> And, uh, and one day I went out um, on the high street and thought, um, if today I find this pair of dresses, I am a witch. And, uh, and I went out and I found a pair of witch costumes <laughs> in the charity shop. And I, but, but then, bizarrely, um, only a couple of weeks later, somebody was going through the effects of a friend of mine, an old friend of mine who had recently died, and um, he was about to throw away a bin bag full of clothing when he noticed a pair of beautiful cocktail dresses, uh, which had belonged to the, the old man's mistress. He used to be um, a professional dancer. Look at, this, look at this exquisite dress. Isn't that incredible? It's gorgeous. So gorgeous. It's crazy and they fit my model perfectly. <laughs> so it's really peculiar how some things just find themselves in here. This one, this, is, this one is just amazing. I bought this in um, Covent Garden Market and somebody had found it on a, on a tip in Kent. It just been dumped. And it's a beautiful um, kind of leisure outfit from the 1920s, possibly 30s. And um, it's silk. It's a beautiful garment. It still has the headdress, the waistcoat, these incredible collots, as well as the jacket. But what's really remarkable about it is that I found with it is this photograph of a woman wearing it. And there's another one with it. And it has the wherewithal to keep these things together. And I'll never know who she is. I'll never know who this lady was. And she's outside a house. It could be her house. And it doesn't look like a really posh house but she has this incredibly luxurious kind of, and this would be a kind of fantasy wear of the period. Who, who is it? I'll never know, you know? And I find, I find that intoxicating about clothing. I mean, it, it is as much that, you know, magpie-like, I'm attracted to beautiful things. And there is, I know that there is a certain beauty and sensuality in a lot of my work, hair, clothing, and so on. I'm interested in the material fact of our lives, the, the object, the material objects of our lives that become important to us, food, etc. But um, they're, they're inherently mysterious. You know, when you find things that are second hand, so often you'll never know the stories, you'll never know anything about that person. This costume um, actually um, gave birth to a painting in the Cabaret series. I did a painting called Tarina the Paper Terror and Inferna the Human Torch. Tarina was a, the Paper Terror was a real woman. He used to tear paper on stage into interesting shapes. But Inferna, the Human Torch, I made her up on the basis of this dress, <laughs> which I found in a charity shop in Brixton. And um, what on earth was that for? <laughs> for what ceremony? What purpose did this serve? What on earth is this? I mean, people have come up with some very lurid suggestions for this costume, but I'll never know. But, but it, it became something really significant for me. And yeah, it gave birth to a whole character, which was, was a self-portrait. This one I, I acquired recently, fairly recently. 
along with another one which is a really incredible cloak made of what looks like crow feathers this enormous which I'm, I'm currently using for a witch I mean which is um, you know appropriate enough and I bought it along with this costume here um, and they they um, um, they they were used in um, Complicite theatre company Complicite productions and I think this one was I think this was worn by um, Catherine Hunter and uh, who's wonderful I really admire her and she I, I can't remember the name of the production, unfortunately. Um, the cloak, the, the crow cloak that I have, um, was in, used in the production of the Caucasian Chalk Circle. And this one, they made two costumes, and one of them was worn by her, and I think one of them was a standby costume. And I don't know which is which, but the other one is in the V&A, bizarrely. Yeah. And I've got this one. So look, isn't that great? Um, I know it's true because I've seen it online. It's true. <laughs> Thank you, Masters. I, it's the only time I've ever blagged anything. I, I never do it. It just seems really revolting to me. But I, I contacted them and said, I, and th because they were letting go of some things, and um, I contacted them and said that I had a show all about theatre at the National Theatre. and. Um, and said, you know, anything that you let me have, I will, I promise that they will be used. I will do paintings you, with them in, in a theatrical context. And, um, and they agreed to let me have these, which is fantastic. So I may blag again. <laughs> um, I, I really like this costume. This is an old theatre costume, which looks like, it looks like some kind of principal boy kind of cosy. These amazing sleeves. It's so kind of worn. It's obviously been used a great deal. But I use that again. I use that for my cabaret project. I kind of uh, it was for a kind of drag king with a moustachioed um, finger. Yeah, this is a real favourite of mine, and um, I I actually bought this in a charity shop in Berlin, and it is the heaviest item of clothing <laughs> in in the world. It's crazy. It's really hefty, it's, and it's it was used in the Deutsche Oper. And I and I, I thought I have no idea why why I want this, and I don't know how on earth I'm ever going to use it. But I, I need to have it, and um, and I folded it down and packed it into my suitcase and lugged it all the way back from Berlin with the rest of my actual clothing in a laundry bag. <laughs> Nearly gave myself a broken back hefting it back, and and that was years ago. And I only used it very recently for the and adapted it for the the Queen of Hearts, and made a, a headdress to go with it to match it. I think I think that's one of the really um, one of the really tricky things um, about using costume about using explicitly theatrical costume is that it can be perceived as being out of time, and to an extent it is, and to an extent it is about a kind of yearning to do something which is out of time, which can't be pinned to a specific time, but nonetheless I do feel that I am I am very much in my time. I feel that my work is in my time. I think I think sometimes um, I mean because because I think generally if I'm using it I think I'm using it in a very conscious way. You know things like the cabaret series. You know it was when I was making it at the time when I was doing the cabaret series it was it was just it was just beginning. To, it, was, it was a real um, kind of revival. It was just a burgeoning revival of cabaret at that time, and I was noticing it everywhere. And um, so it isn't just about wishing I was back in Weimar 80 years ago. It's very much about being here now. You know, when I was painting, when I was painting objects, you know, crockery in China and um, you know, woodsware from hospital china from the, the 1940s, um, I was painting it because it was everywhere. Because there, there was such a kind of an emphasis on a kind of Kath Kidston kind of yearning, a historicized glamour, a yearning for that for a time which has passed that I was seeing everywhere now. And that's why I, I know that's why I was doing it, as much as I'm really attracted to those things. Look. <laughs> Got my lovely costume. Uh, yeah, so I bought this paint, I bought this, um, this amazing costume um, in a local charity shop. And it was hanging in the window and, um, and I couldn't believe my eyes. And, and I ran in there uh, the moment the shop opened and bought it and um, and um, I couldn't help myself, but I thought I'll just I'll just have a little look among the racks and see if there's anything else in there for me. And so I left this um, at the desk, 
and um, went into a changing room with something. And while I was in the changing room, I heard a woman running in and going, it's too late, and it becoming really emotional. And she was nearly in tears, saying, I need that dress. It's exactly what I need for my fashion shoot. And she was a makeup artist. And I came out of the changing room and spoke to her, and I said, I've just bought it. It's, I'm sorry, I've, and I really need it. I'm doing a show about cabaret, and it's, it's so perfect for me. She was so emotional. I thought, I've got to let her use it. It's just so terrible, you know. So I, I said, take it, use it, and then bring it back here. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust that you'll bring it back. And, um, and she did. She did, she used it, she brought it back and she, with a bottle of champagne for me. It's really sweet. And then eventually she sent me photos of the shoot and it looked fabulous. She had this um, gorgeous black model wearing it. And the whole shoot was in a kind of industrial graffitied area. So it was just, it seemed like the antithesis of what I was doing. It was lovely. So it's had a life, you know. <laughs>